I wanted to make a video about something that I typically don't, and this is going to be concerning about Trials of Osiris, and more specifically Trials of Osiris Labs, or whatever they're calling it. So that's what this video is going to be about. Now, I don't consider myself to be the highest tier of PvP player. I'm going to try to find my Trials report information and put it on screen. I don't even know like these websites that we use, so I'm going to ask someone where I can find this information. But So, so y'all can pr put this in perspective to see... like. Maybe my opinion's not valid because I'm not, like, a good player or whatever. But basically, I wanted to talk about my perspective of these Trials Labs and the things Bungie have been trying to experiment. First off, the second week of uh, Trials in Season 15, it was pretty interesting seeing the flawless matchmaking pool. I think that's actually a good idea. Now, the timing at which they did it, I don't know. It depends. But my experience from that is I went flawless with some friends, and then after that, I just kind of played solo for the rest of the weekend and something that i noticed was that i actually enjoyed my experience a lot better doing it solo being in the flawless matchmaking pool because i also felt like there was less toxicity in there because everyone in that playlist knows that everyone else has went flawless now whether that was a carrier they went solo matchmaking flawless is you know you're not gonna know that stuff but that's a little too much. But, like, what I want to point out was, like, there was sort of this, like, it felt like mutual respect. Like, if you made a mistake, someone didn't just leave the first match and be like, oh, you're terrible, acting like they're, like, on this high horse, acting like they're so far superior than you. You know, it was this sort of, like, everyone actually stuck out the matches. Now, whether it is a, that has to do with the flawless matchmaking pool or the punishing people for leaving aspect that Bungie implemented, which... Thankfully, that's implemented because people should not just be leaving a match because you lost the first round. It's like you can make mistakes, people, and you also need to use those rounds to adapt to your enemy. Not everyone plays the same way. But the my experience basically was that it was good, but I don't know. A lot of people in the community were saying, like, oh, I don't like this. But I, I want to know, like, who are these people asking? Are these, like, really high, like, PvP players? Are they, like, really good PvP players? Are they people that kind of got carried to the lighthouse and then... You know, they just started solo queuing and they didn't have a choice of being in the flawless pool. But if that's the case, you know, they already got their adept weapon and now they can farm for it. It's not like, you know, it's not impossible to get some wins in that. The main point I'm trying to say with the flawless matchmaking pool is, you know, everyone in that pool is flawless. To my to my knowledge. I mean, I guess you could carry some friends into trials and they may not be flawless. So maybe, maybe that was the thing that was happening with people where like... They were trying to get carried to the lighthouse, but the person carrying them had already went flawless. So that meant that every game they were going up against, they were going up against flawless people. Now, you know, stuff like that matters, and that information is very important for feedback because it makes it to where the feedback is not... I'm not saying it's illegitimate. Like, the feedback's feedback. You know, it's whatever. It's your opinion. But it puts it in perspective of, like, oh, you know, this, this, and this. Like, had you done this, you wouldn't have been in that matchmaking pool. So maybe it wouldn't have been that bad. So maybe more information is the key here. While we're here, why don't you go ahead and smash that like button. The second thing I wanted to talk about was the current week of Trials with the flag rotating game mode. Uh, again, I've seen people complain about this, and my perspective on who the people complaining about this are are the people that don't know how to play objectives, frankly. Like, that's the best way I could put it, because... This, this is this seems like the best result for what Bungie wanted to see as a result. They didn't want to see stomp out matches, or in their words, 5-0 matches. And for my experience, at least, going flawless, getting up to flawless, and before that, even like just playing casually with some friends, you know, it, every match felt a little, a lot more intense than just regular trials, just regular elimination. Because what it did was, you know, you lost, it's like, okay, we lost guys, let's try to recoup, we don't have to play as aggressively. We can we have the advantage here. So as soon as that flag pops, get someone on it, and you know that forces the enemy to rush at us, making them make bad decisions or just put them in a bad spot, basically. But I think that's the main thing: is a lot of people complaining about this mode don't really know how to play objectively. Because think about it, el elimination or trials is just killing people. Like that's just the standard way of playing. So I think a lot of people that play that way don't see this mode as like fun because they're like. Oh, they can win because they don't even have to kill us all or something like that. Also, another thing is I played with two other Warlocks. And this is something I've sort of been talking about for a while is that Warlocks are the least advantageous in PvP. And that's just because of the way the game is designed. 
So if you look at like how much mobility options all the classes have, Warlocks have the fewest. Even with the Icarus Dash Top Tree Dawnblade, you still have Rift, which is like a negative mobility for yourself because you gain no benefit of that outside of the Rift. So it restricts you to the small Rift area. So this is something kind of a little more in depth, but having a flag mode means that there is less mobility mobility is not as important in this mode and i think that's another thing another fair criticism of the people complaining about this mode is that most of them i think the last data that we saw was that most players play hunters and aka the most mobility focused class and then when you hyper focus that onto trials it's probably a, a lot more proportion of people playing hunters than titans or warlocks and titans are still have a little more mobility than warlocks but you know they ha they have the uh, barricade which is negative mobility for enemy players whereas like the warlock most subclasses do not have mobility what you have top tree done bottom tree done bottom tree arc and then you have like transversives which is just sprint speed and every class has a sprint speed exotic so that kind of evens out so my point here is that the flag mode sort of incentivize not incentivizes but um rewards a little more stationary play because you're playing an objective you're defending a spot you always have that as an option of winning so i like this game mode particularly because it opens up a lane of different playstyle that has never been seen before in trials you know usually the flag spawns in trials when it's like 1v1 or and the time is run out or something like that or it's just like some stupid stomp where it's like 3v1 and they've just been waiting for their super to build up and then you know you you didn't jump off the map or, or you couldn't jump off the map or something like that you know I, I really think this this trials lab was a success from in my opinion but now apparently a lot of people in the community disagree now i would really like to get everyone's like feedback i would like to see why people don't like this stuff i think a lot of it is just abrupt like oh this isn't what it should be this isn't what i'm used to sort of like oh change all any changes bad sort of opinion i feel like that's a lot of the community right now when they're talking about trials so this video is getting a little too long for me so i'm going to give a little tldr and then my outro after that so the tldr is this i think these changes are for the positive for the better i like the flawless matchmaking pool it felt like after i went flawless and i played solo i actually got competent teammates because i knew that they were flawless before and it felt like a 50 50 win loss ratio and I feel like that's what the desired win-loss of any sort of PvP game should be for matchmaking purposes. And then the second point is I like the flag mode. I know a lot of people don't like it, but I think it, it puts a shift on the gameplay. And I think most people that are saying that they don't like it, it's either one that ch any change is bad to them. Like they think that changing it is just simply bad. And two, I think it puts a spin on the... the uh, classes that are played i think warlocks get a little bit more of an advantage in this mode and i think that's a just thing i think hunters have had the advantage for too long it's not that they've had the advantage for too long it's that they have the advantage in every aspect of pvp they have faster super regen on bottom solar golden gun they have many more mobility options they have slowing options they have ranged melees they have just so many more options for pvp whereas the other classes don't get as many so i think this game mode incentivizes more structure and uh playing the objective which a lot of people do not seem to be good at playing the objective thanks for watching if you like this video a thumbs up is appreciated if you want to see more of this content please consider subscribing and if you want to help me out you can go check out my other youtube channel spin it games i have two animations up right now and there's going to be up to six so please go check all that stuff out i would really appreciate it